Today's top story is the share of the Ang Totoong Narco List videos is charged with inciting to sedition today. The country's inflation rate eases to a 16-month low of 3% in April. No Filipino was hurt in the Russian plane crash. The Mascara dance team was declared best foreign group in the 2019 Daegu Colorful Festival in South Korea. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Department of Justice has officially filed charges against Rodel Jaime, creator of the website that shared Ang Totoong Narcolist videos with inciting to sedition. The case was filed at the Paranaque Regional Trial Court, which set the bail at 36,000 pesos. The Totoong Narcolist videos tagged Duterte's son, former Davao City Vice Mayor Paulo Duterte, his son-in-law attorney Manases Carpio, and former aide Christopher Go in illegal drug trade. Jaime said he made the Metro Balita website for Liberal Party supporters, but he did not know anything about the videos. He also denied that the opposition party hired him. Several unidentified individuals who allegedly helped spread the Totoong Narcolist videos were also tagged in the charges. Jaime could face a prison sentence of 6 to 12 years if found guilty. The person who claims to be Bicoy, the accuser of President Rodrigo Duterte on his involvement in illegal drugs, is assured of his day in court to lay down his allegations. But Malacanang is doubtful of Bicoy's credibility, saying they have the backing of a bigger entity seeking to oust the president. Miguel Hill has the story. Malacanang questioned the credibility of a man claiming to be Bicoy in a series of videos called Ang Totoong Narcolist, which tagged the family and allies of President Rodrigo Duterte in the illegal drug trade. This after Peter Jomel Advincula, who claimed to be Bicoy, appeared at the Integrated Bar of the Philippines office yesterday to seek legal assistance after claiming there were threats to his life. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo noted that Advincula is currently facing multiple criminal cases like Staffa and he was jailed in 2012 for illegal recruitment, large-scale estafa, and theft. Panelo said Advincula's allegations have already been disproved, particularly those against entities tagged by Bicoy, such as the Rural Bank of Ginubatan and the Misibis Bay Resort. Panelo warned the IBP may have unwittingly allowed itself to be used by Advincula to perpetuate lies. He added that Advincula is likely being used by a personality in conspiracy with others bent on destroying the reputation of the president. For his part, former special assistant to the president Bongo, who was accused of having a dragon tattoo that links him to the drug trade, maintained that Bicoy's allegations are black propaganda. Kamali po si Bicoy ng kanyang uh, pinuntahan. Hindi po siya dapat pumunta sa IBP. Huwag po kayong mag-alala, protection na naman kayo ng gobyerno. Pero dapat po muna siya magpa... Sa tingin ko, magpapa-admit muna siya sa mental hospital. Bicoy, gaya ng pinangako namin ni Pangulong Duterte, pagpapatuloy namin ang kampanya namin laban sa illegal na droga, korupsyon at kriminalidad. At wala pong makakapagpigil sa amin ito. Meanwhile, PNP spokesperson Colonel Bernard Banak said the agency will continue its investigation and validate Advincula's identity. He also noted that Advincula will have the opportunity to substantiate his serious accusations and convince the Filipino people that he is worth listening to. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Miguel Hill. Malacanang says the accusations of Peter Jomel Advincula alias Bicoy against President Duterte and his allies will not stand in court even if he presents his evidence. Communications Secretary Martin Andanar said Bicoy exposes in the Ang Totoong Narcolist series, including those with circumstantial evidence, will be easily debunked. Andanar said the earlier rebuttal of the entities he accused of involvement in illegal drugs, such as the Rural Bank of Ginubatan, already weakened his case. He added that Bicoy exploits has earned him the monker face of disinformation of 2019. 
Andanar said if Bikoy decides to take his case to court, he should present his evidence before the NBI rather than make noise in the media. About 1,404 police personnel were trained to substitute as Board of Election Inspectors. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde said the Comelec trained police will be deployed to areas with high alert levels to substitute for teachers who are unable to fulfill their election duties. A send-off ceremony was held today at Camp Aguinaldo for Comelec, AFP, PNP and DepEd personnel who will be in charge of the May 13 elections. About 800,000 government personnel and non-government organizations will ensure the success of the elections on Monday. A Taiwanese fugitive wanted for fraud was arrested in Naia, and the Canadian government vows to collect and ship back the garbage it dumped in the Philippines. More on these and other news around the metro from Janice Gabe. A Taiwanese fugitive wanted for fraud was apprehended at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport for using a fake passport. The Taiwanese, identified as Huang Chongchia, was arrested at the Terminal 1 last Friday. Huang is wanted in his country for fraud and has a pending deportation case stemming from a request from the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office or TECO. The Taiwanese had been hiding in the country since June last year. Meanwhile, the Canadian government has offered to pay the cost of shipping back the tons of decaying garbage that have been staying in Philippine ports since 2014. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said the president reiterated his sentiment that the Philippines is not a dump site and that we will no longer accept any waste from any country. In other news, the House Plenary hosted a mass and necrological service this morning in honor of former Speaker Prospero Nograles. Nograles' remains is flown to Davao right after the departure honors. He passed away on May 4 at the age of 71 after succumbing to pneumonia. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Still to come? The country's inflation rate eased to a 16-month low of 3% in April. And Moises Padilla Negros Occidental is put under Kamala control after a series of election-related killings. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Election na sa May 13, 2019. Mula 6 a.m. hanggang 6 p.m. ang botohat. Ang mga rehistradong botante ay boboto ng labindalawang senador at isang party list para sa national positions at isang miyembro ng House of Representatives, Governor, Vice Governor, Mayor, Vice Mayor at mga miyembro ng Sangguniang Panlalawigan, Panlungsod at Bayan para sa local positions. At bilang isang batante, ang pagboto ay dapat nating paghandaan. Narito ang gabay para sa tamang pagboto. Bago pa man dumating ang araw ng eleksyon, pag-isipang mabuti ang mga kandidatong nais iboto. Mainam na gumawa na ng listahan ng mga iboboto. Para sa maalam na pagdedesisyon, alamin ang plataporma, track record, background, paninindigan sa mga isyu, at iba pang mahalagang impormasyon ukol sa mga kandidato. Sa araw ng eleksyon, pumunta sa iyong polling place. Mabuting magdala ng anumang valid ID. Hanapin ang inyong pangalan sa listahan ng botanting nakapaskil at tandaan ang inyong precinct number at sequence number sa listahan. Lumapit sa electoral board at sabihin ang inyong pangalan, precinct number at sequence number. Sisiguraduhin ng Electoral Board ang inyong pagkakakilanlan gamit ang EDCVL o Election Day Computerized Voters List o sa pamamagitan ng Voter Registration Verification Machine o VRVM na gagamitin naman sa ilang mga piling lugar. Matapos masiguro ang inyong pagkakakilanlan at walang nakitang anumang marka ng indelible ink ang inyong mga kuko, bibigyan kayo ng isang balota. Suriin ang balota para masiguro na wala itong anumang marka o shade liban lamang sa pirma ng Electoral Board Chairperson.
Malacanang welcomed the country's inflation slowdown, saying this proves the competence of President Rodrigo Duterte in managing the economy. The country's inflation rate eased to a 16-month low of 3% in April from 3.3% in the previous month. The rate remains within the government's 3 to 4% target range. The Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA, said the decline was caused by the slower annual increase in the heavily weighted food and non-alcoholic beverages index at 3%. It also reported slower movement in the country's food index at 2.9%. Slower annual increments were also noted in basic goods such as rice, meat, fish and oils, as well as utilities and services. Meanwhile, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas will look into a possible interest rate cut this week. Finance Chief Carlos Dominguez III said the Philippines may receive another credit rating upgrade in two years through more reforms and infrastructure projects. At the celebration of the DOF's 122nd anniversary, Dominguez said the Philippines will attain a credit rating A within the next two years depending on the completion of the tax reform program and the ability to keep the budget deficit below 3% of the gross domestic product. Dominguez said he is expecting less resistance to the second phase of the tax reform law as it cuts the income tax rate for corporations from 32% to 25%. Last week, Global Debt Watcher Standard & Poor's upgraded the Philippines' credit rating to BBB+, with a positive outlook. It is the highest sovereign rating the country has ever achieved. SNP said the government so far achieved partial success with its comprehensive tax reform program. Comelec resolution was issued on Monday, placing Moises Padilla Negros Occidental under its control following the killing of two re-electionist councillors and a former councillor. The move put Moises Padilla under Kamala control was recommended by the Provincial Security Force of Negros Occidental. A special task force will be formed to coordinate with local officials on how the poll body's control will be exercised. Moises Padilla was listed under Category Red, being an area of grave concern with a history of poll-related incidents in the past two elections, intense political rivalry, and serious armed threat by the New People's Army and other lawless elements. On April 25, re-electionist councillor Jose Antonio Michael Garcia and his uncle Jose Marcelino Mark Garcia were killed on the way home from the campaign. Last March 31st, councillor Polomar Hilario, a re-electionist, was gunned down by members of the New People's Army. Security measures are underway for the coming midterm elections. Benj Bondok tells us more about the preparations in the provinces. Authorities are in full blast to ensure a peaceful elections on Monday, May 13. In Pangasinan, some 600 augmentation forces arrived yesterday from the Police Regional Office 1 in Region 1. This as Balungao and Rosales towns are declared election hotspots under orange category or election areas of immediate concern. Over 2,000 unlicensed and undocumented firearms were seized following its strengthened drive to prevent election-related violence. In Iligan City, troops from the Army's 2nd Mechanized Infantry Brigade are deployed to Lanao del Norte and Iligan City on Monday morning to ensure peaceful and orderly elections. The troops were reminded to ensure the security not only of the voters and the candidates but also of those who are serving in the elections. In Davao City, a poll monitoring center was opened inside the tactical operations center of the police regional office. Police Brigadier General Marcelo Morales said the Regional Election Monitoring Center or REMAC is vital for the May 13 elections and beyond and that PRO 11 is the first in the country to obtain the smart policing using digital technology. REMAC uses geographical information system to plot incidents and get information on the ground in real time. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. Filipino boxer John Ignatius Macas 
handed the Philippines its lone gold medal in the 2019 Arafura Games in Darwin, Australia. The 19-year-old Makas from Cagayan de Oro City defeated Ivan Pavic of New Zealand via referee stop contest in the second round of the men's 52-kilogram championship fight last Saturday. John Christian Gnosis lost to the Tom Hands of New Zealand, but the Davao City fighter still pocketed a bronze medal in the men's boxing welterweight division. The Philippines has won 31 gold medals with the men's basketball, sepak takraw, and badminton teams still playing as of Saturday, which is the final day of the multi-sports competition. Up next, no Filipino was hurt in the Russian plane crash and two journalists were freed from Myanmar prison. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Gamit ang marking pen, ishade ng buo ang bilog sa tabi ng pangalan ng kandidatong iyong napili. Huwag mag-overvote o mag-shade ng lagpas sa dami ng kandidatong dapat iboto sa bawat posisyon. Ipasok ang inyong balota sa BCM o Vote Counting Machine at pagkatapos, ibalik ang marking pen at balot secrecy folder. Ipoproseso ng BCM ang inyong balota at makakas na ang inyong boto. Pagkatapos, magpiprint na ng voting receipt ang BCM kung saan nakasulat ang inyong mga binoto. Ang resibo ay itutupi ng Electoral Board at gugupitin. Bago ibigay ang resibo, lalagyan ng indelible ink ang kuko ng inyong kanang hintuturo. Suriin ang inyong voting receipt at pagkatapos ay ihulog ito sa nakatakdang lagayan at saka lumabas na ng polling place. Tandaan, bawal ilabas, iuwi at kuhanan ng litrato ang resibo. Simple, madali. Kaya sa May 13, 2019, sumama sa pagdesisyon para sa bayan sa pamamagitan ng pagboto. Dahil ikaw, ako at bawat botanteng Pilipino ay bahagi ng malayang bayan, malayang halalan. Isang paalala mula sa Comelec Voter Education Committee at nanghimpilang ito. Responsibility. That means taking care of the environment, of our natural resources, our heritage sites, and our people. It's about developing a destination not only for the economic gains it will bring today, but for the benefit of the generations that will come after. At least 41 people on board a Russian plane died just after takeoff from Moscow's Sheremetyevo Airport on May 5. The Department of Foreign Affairs this morning reports that no Filipino was hurt in the fire and extended its condolences to the victims. According to Aeroflot, the plane suffered an engine fire after being forced to return to Sheremetyev Airport due to technical problems. Apart from the 41 fatalities, 14 received outpatient treatment and 9 people were hospitalized after the crash. And in our foreign news, Myanmar will hold a regional investment forum in Yangon this week in order to increase investment and attract more investors in the region. The two-day Yangon Investment Forum 2019 on Friday and Saturday will unveil the projects in the region under the Myanmar Sustainable Development Plan. The forum will include panel discussions focused on Myanmar's industry, finance, logistics, industrial zones, agribusiness, 
garments, textiles, and manufacturing. Participants are arranged to make field visits to Yangon's special economic zone and industrial zone. About 2.54 billion US dollars of foreign direct investments flowed into Myanmar in the first seven months of fiscal year 2018 to 2019, which began in October. Currently, the Yangon region accounts for 23% of the country's gross domestic product. Also in Myanmar, two journalists were freed from prison in Yangon after 500 days behind bars. Reuter journalists Walon and Kiao Su Uri were arrested in December 2017 for allegedly breaking Official Secrets Act. The two were imprisoned in Myanmar for the report on the killing of 10 Rohingya Muslim men and boys by security forces and Buddhist civilians during an army crackdown back in August of 2017. The news came as Myanmar announced the release of over 6,000 prisoners in an amnesty effective today. President Win Myint pardoned thousands of prisoners in two mass amnesties last month, which coincided with the traditional New Year celebration, which began on April 17. Bacolod City is boasting of another feat as its Mascara Dance Team topped the 2019 Daegu Colorful Festival in South Korea. Here is our report. The Mascara Dance Team was declared Best Foreign Group in the 2019 Daegu Color Festival in Daegu City, South Korea on Sunday night. The performers from Bacolod bested 21 other groups in the foreign category. The contingent mentored by choreographer Segundo Jesus Cabalcar edged out teams from other Asian countries such as Japan, China, Taiwan, Indonesia, and Vietnam after the elimination round held on Saturday. This year's performance art festival, themed Colorful Shouts of Freedom, included various street art performances and the biggest street parade in South Korea. In October last year, the Mascara Festival dancers also won the bronze medal at the 2018 World Mass Dance Competition, one of the highlights of the Andong Mass Dance Festival held in Andong City, South Korea. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Joyce Kudis. After many long months of the dry season, Metro Manila has been experiencing a little scattered rain showers which is definitely welcome from being very, very hot and humid. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. The share of the Ang Totoong Narco List videos is charged with inciting to sedition today. The country's inflation rate eases to a 16-month low of 3% in April. No Filipino was hurt in the Russian plane crash. The Mascara dance team was declared best foreign group in the 2019 Daegu Colorful Festival in South Korea. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day.